Yeah, what's going on everybody? Um, today we're going to be having a discussion about the positions and special positions in the Tower of God series. Um, I think a week ago I sent out that poll talking about, well, asking you guys to vote um, what position you'd be and special position. So what we're going to do basically is generally we're going to speak about um, the, the main five first, how we think uh, each position is integral to the overall team. And then we'll kind of transition this into the special position to talk about what we know. We'll talk about notable people from each position, special position, and like techniques and stuff, all that, all that jazz, weapons, everything, whatever. But yeah. Um. So, starting first, I just want to ask everybody like here, what did you guys pick? Like, if you or what you think you would be if you were in the Tower of God series, like as a position. Oh my God. Well, go on. You gotta go first, Sammy. You're the first one to speak up. Let's do this, man. <laughs> Look at my Abby. <laughs> <laughs> that means, right. like, come on. <laughs> All right. All right. Silver Dwarf. Um, what about you? Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm now gonna go. I'm now gonna get on the guide, right? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Vince? Um, uh, I think I'd be a scout. And I'd probably be a defensive scout because I just get tired of attacking people. So I ain't trying to fight like that. Marcus? I said that I would be a lighthouse keeper or a light bearer. Uh, for me. The interchangeable names, I guess. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah I'd be a, a scout. Um, I would be a battle focus scout, but I can, not, I'd probably like masquerade as a normal one, just kind of going around doing normal scout shit. And then, <clears throat> with and then after you know, if I have to throw hands, I'll throw hands. But um, so primarily speaking, in Tower of God, right? Uh, most battles and a lot of tests are carried out in teams, almost like a sport. So you got you obviously got your scouts, you got your fishermen, your light bearer, lighthouse keeper, um, spear bearer, and wave controller. In the poll that I sent you guys, um, eighty-one people voted. I have to pull it up. I didn't open the damn thing because I'm an ape. Um. I was a little bit surprised by the poll. I'm um, not too surprised, but uh, Wave Controller won with like, most, of the, most of the votes, uh, 19, so to, like tw like 21%. Then it was Fisherman, Lighthouse Keeper, which I was shocked to see that high because Rachel, Rachel's won. Um, Scout, Guide, Anima, Spear Bearer, Gian Sula, Spell User, Defender, Juan Sula, Huayomsa, and then Don Sula. So that's kind of the order it went in. But um, okay. So what is there? A, is there a specific position you guys want to start with, or no? No, you just go take it from the top from Fisherman. That's the one we know most about. All right. So we'll do that. All right. So the role of the Fisherman is their you know their main their, their main offense. They kind of go into the enemy forces and they're powering through people with their physical attacks. Uh, when it comes to Fisherman, there's uh, generally I I always say there's three types, right? So there's the real user types. They use they use like real real and whatnot. We kind of saw this with Elaine Kaiser when she was using on wheels against Bam stuff. And then you had to have like the dueling type there, their close combat. But I also feel like there's always gonna be hybrids, people who can do both. So I would say there'll be three. So I mean, how integral do we think that the fisherman is to the overall team? I mean, there is no one um position that is greater than the other. So they're all equally integral if you ask me, but I believe all um like i shouldn't say all but from what we see i think all fishermen are automatically real fishermen because even look back at season one um endorsey was using real type weapons with an inventory reel those red those um red needle like things those were not exactly like 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 gone's fishing pole but they still move in a real like fashion but regardless i think they're very important because at the end of the day you need to freaking attack to win, right? You need a if you're fighting your opponent, just defending alone isn't gonna win the fight. You still gotta still gotta throw hands. So they're yet they're your person to throw hands. So they're they're the most uh they're they're most definitely important, to say the least. I'm I, I slightly have to disagree with you on the equal a level of importance personally, because like I'm gonna say that they're all relatively similar. But personally, I feel like 
light bears, and light bears, wave controllers, and to a degree, I would say fishermen are probably just a little bit more important than spear bears and scouts. To, just because of the way we've seen them function up to this point in the series. Mm -hmm. Because, um, but I will definitely agree that, like, for the most part, it seems that fishermen are doing all of the, are pretty much doing the forefront of the action. They're pretty much taking everyone out, usually by themselves, from what I can remember, most fishermen have been fighting almost exclusively by themselves, unless it's been someone obnoxiously stronger than them, in which case they just were slaughtered five minutes later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm like I'm gonna say that like fishermen are definitely pretty vital if you're gonna be constructing a team. Also, Hemmings forgot to mention that they have data class that has the whole inventory or that little crescent looking thing that um holds all your weapons. Now of course all classes can't hold items or whatnot, but this wheel or thing holder, whatever you wanna call it, stash is specifically for weapons. We've seen endorse user in season one and we've seen um Kaiser used on the name hunt station, and I'm I know for a fact that a, um Jihad had one. But he just he didn't just bring it out and have all of them to showcase like the other two females I just listed. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Vince, you want to you want to chime in? Oh, okay. I was just gonna say that um, I don't know like how specifically. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's not like uh, there's no number of percentages about it, but I feel like the fisherman is the most common one in the tower mm -hmm. the most common one that we see because if you just list off the rank of names adori ari han jing sun yuri zahar um and then you know regulars anak and drossy you know coon ran uh, basically most a lot of the people are, are fishermen so and like like y'all said it's like the most one-on-one -on -one based people so like they fight the most out of everybody they're yeah. the, they're the main yeah. offense yeah it just depends on what type of team you're running i guess or like the specific set of skills because mm -hmm. so, um yeah am i, am I echoing that's right yeah. i'm not here echo. maybe i'm just tripping but um the thing about fishermen that um that I find that it's appealing to most people because why I thought it would win first is just because like 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 Simi said it's a high beast position because they do all the fighting and throwing the hands and you know they're basically fighting everybody and holding off they're, they're, like, they're like the striker the offense right so they go mm -hmm. into the heart of the enemy and basically wipe everyone out. Um, personally, I think that it's it's one of the more important positions. Um, especially since they basically handle, generally speaking, they handle mostly offense. Every, everyone can do offensive things, obviously, in all the categories. But since they are the main one, I think that they are a little bit more important. Because I kind of agree with Marcus, where it's like, it's not like every everyone's role is important to some degree, but I would put some just a little bit over the other ones. Just to like add on to what Vince was saying about how we've mostly seen fishermen, like, I just decided to pull up the app just out of curiosity and I went back to chapter 28 from part one mm -hmm. when they were actually going through like who was going to be designated into what like what role roles yeah had the fewest amount of people followed by scouts it's implied that there's fewer light bears than spear bears and fishermen because the list is shorter when where the uh, ellipses begin to imply that there's more people and then spear bears and fishermen have the same length, followed by the ellipses. So, and I feel like that's inadvertently in, like, implying that we're mostly going to be seeing spear bears and fishermen when it comes to most people. Interesting. And they have to have a lot of destructive power for specifically one on one fights, too. So that's important. Um, do you guys have a preference in terms of seeing people use the real, their real inventories or like just using like hands and whatnot? Nope. I find um, fishermen to be the least interesting position. So, no, I, I don't really give a shit. To be my honest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, my personal preference is more so as long as 
their actions fit the character dynamic. Like, I I don't want to see a knock fight. Like, even though, like, I enjoyed her time with, like, Green April and the green reel she used uh, during the workshop battle arc, I feel like a knock is at her most entertaining in combat situations when she's just throwing hands and that's it. That's fair. Like, I feel like I, I feel like at times weapons are definitely necessary, but I feel like it works best when they fit the character dynamic and how they act in, independently. I disagree. I thought she was more interesting when she was using a thing. That's like not some shit. Like I'm used to so many manga and anime just throwing hands. It's way more interesting to seeing weapons in a different assortment of weapons in the tower. The more I can see of the actual workshop of the tower, the more interested I am. Because I already know these people can throw hands. I mean, almost everybody in the tower can throw hands to a certain extent. I mean, they have martial arts, for God's sake. If you wanted to throw hands, you could just learn martial arts. True. I feel like, at least in the case for a knock, I think it's just the fact that we haven't seen her in roughly 200 chapters plus. Sigh. I, I, I know, you're really, you're really upset about this. But, like, I just... I just feel like it's just a matter of like, for like where we were the last time we saw her, like that's just like that like the fight against Kun Ran was just perfect as is. Like I wouldn't add anything else. I just think we need to see another major Anak showcase to really emphasize the kind of character she is and the kind of fighter she is. Anything else we want to say about this? We want to move on to the next one. Um, yeah, you can move on. I think oh, let's take time. That's a little thing. I think like. If you look at as any sport or any team based or team objective style game, if you if you, if your team has only assault type characters in it versus a team that has that's balanced, guess which one is winning? So I don't I wouldn't necessarily put fishermen as more important. Yeah, they are they are the main offense, but as as everyone has already um, come to agreement, everybody can do um offense in their own right anyway so if you have a team that just all assault just all niggas with assault and they all got their assault rifles and they rushing in and they leave their base open or whatever whatever example you want to think of mm-hmm. not really good in my opinion so i think i don't think that they're freaking replaceable or interchangeable but i still think that all of the um classes balance each other out i feel that i feel it all right so let's go to spear bearer right so they're supposed to be kind of the long range or medium range um offense of the team with pinpoint accuracy attacking from far and close obviously um even within that you can have a melee type um a spear spear bear right and then some, some throw them this is probably the one position to me where i i don't i don't think is is like essential right so far like Obviously, from the stories we heard, we know like certain combinations are, are deadly. But like from what I've seen, like so far, like visually, I'm like this is probably the least, um, one of the one of the least um appealing positions for me just as, just as a viewer, where it's like yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I I think the I think the biggest problem with Spear Bears at this point in the series is that we've got our Crafter. I'm sorry, not our crafter, a paracule who's go. <laughs> uh, like uh, evolution. Like no, like think about it. He ruined like he pretty much ruined like the plan in part one. I know, and, okay, I remember that. And you're talking about. Like yeah, like Hodge literally said, yo, like get up there, throw the spears when I give you the signal. And he tells the dude to just start running on their own. And they get the hands thrown to them, like, just embarrassingly. Then Paracule shows up and just gets thrashed and ruins the fight with uh, Ran and Anak. Then we've got Rock, who I feel like gets very minimal time Here. to do much of anything. Mm-hmm. I feel I- like I think the vast majority of his fights start or end off screen. So we don't really know the disc- like the degree of what he can do with a spear, other than occasionally throwing it. The problem with spear bears is Sui just does not give him any attention. 
That's yeah. all. I don't think Facts. there's nothing Facts. wrong with snipers at all. I mean, if you can go type in sniper montage on YouTube and see what you're going to find. Like, my I, hands are shaking. <laughs> sniper position is actually very high decent. I'm very surprised he still paid absolutely no attention at all. He kind of teased it with the um, MC Solo to position test. Wrath was the only person who passed his position test along with Ghost, so he didn't have to take the tag test. And then he didn't get to do anything after that. Yeah. Kind of like, he, why are you shafting this whole position? Go on. Yeah. And the only, like, ranker spear bears we know of are you, Bakdal, Mule Love, nice favorite character, Kuhn, Edwan, and the goat, Enryu. Like, like Enryu, he, he's just exempt from the rule because he can do whatever the hell he wants regardless. Kuhn, Edwan, we haven't really seen him do much of anything. We saw him fight Jihad with Data Jihad for like two minutes and then they got schooled. Mm -hmm. Mule Love pretty much was just there to I guess keep Bam at bay to convince him to take the test properly and that was about it. And I don't think we've seen anything from you Buck Doll yet. What can uh Mashani be classified as a spear bearer too or not? Uh I believe Mashani is a I don't think that's her like general um position. I, I could I'll check, yeah. but um she can definite obviously because she's from the Kun family. She's she can make the spears yeah. like the, the, the electric lances just like how Rand did and um her dad, like so she could still use right. that techniques. Yeah, and but even, rank, but even, but but even when she used it, it was it not like it's not like it did anything to Jinsung. You know, it was, like wasn't right. It wasn't. It was cool though. Yeah, so it's like is just completely shafting the position in general i don't know why there's nothing wrong with freaking snipers at all it's just like okay yeah, he's, he's got the yeah. high beast wave bearers and the, i mean the high beast wave controllers and the high beast freaking fishermen and whatnot okay let's see mm -hmm. let's see the snipers do some no scopes like come on i let's think see, that six across the map like come on my personal hope mm -hmm. is that part three is where rock actually gets time to shine or at least just Spear bears in general, because I feel like up to this point in time, it's just been your innate talent as a person and how you can fight hand to hand over like any type of technical abilities that you learned or uh, uh, weapons that you've gotten along along your travels. Well, I think there's there's two issues with the spear bear too that I've noticed is that one. They do all, for being a spear bearer. A lot of them have done an awful lot of close combat. And two, when I'm thinking of the spear bearer position, and like and like, uh, Simi keeps saying about a sniper. Well, the point of a sniper is supposed to be a one shot kill too. So a spear bearer is somebody I think is just supposed to be a one shot kill, or they're supposed to take take you out in a couple of strikes. So it kind of makes the position kind of uh, inefficient without a team. They don't really do good standing on their own. Well, yeah, because it says that they're they're not they're not really good at chaotic battles, even though they'll keep some needles on them in case it gets chaotic. But they're supposed to be like there for like things and when it's not too crazy. And then um I I I, I, I to bring this up that um see you saw you said that uh for rankers like with like with like proper um direction from like a lighthouse keeper like a spear bearer can strike somebody from like tens of like kilometers away. So like so let's see it. <laughs> that's what i'm saying i want to see someone get sniped in the chest from a spear from far right away. i really thought it was a way i really thought it was a wasted opportunity when they brought when they showed us kun at a while and he didn't like really do anything with like this stuff it's like every yeah he tried to throw that I like, I like jihad's power but like come on that wasn't gonna work <laughs> like we all knew that like it'd have been more interesting if like he was the one that bam had to fight or like he saved Bam from Data Jaha whooping his ass from like super far away or something. Like I don't know. Like yeah, it, it would be it would be cool to see someone who's like maybe they're not even good at like at the um the melee type, but they're so good at, with their spear throws. They're just keeping you at bay. You can't get close. Like yeah. like remember how freaking Seven Deadly Sin started when all yeah, 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 yeah. Lance uh, like fucking guilt, like guilt under. Yes, yes, exactly. Let's see, let's see that. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with snipers. I'm trying to see some phase montages with the dubstep music and all that. I'm trying to see some, old, old, some 360 across the map. You know what I'm saying? Like come Out on. Control. 
Oh my goodness. Um, Out of control. I, I I forgot to mention this with the other one. Um, just real quick, fish uh, fishermen tend to carry lighter weaponry because they got to be able to move and whatnot. And then with um, spear bearers, their 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 weaponry is, like their caskets and stuff or coffins, whatever they use to contain their spears are pretty damn heavy. So I guess generally speaking, they're not supposed to be extremely mobile. Yeah. Yeah. I can get I, um. I'm trying to see someone get sniped, man. I, I a big agree. <laughs> that would be cool. But um it yeah, this is probably the position I think needs a bit more representation, especially from the long range um aspect. Anything else you want to say about this? Shout out to my boy Cool Kalan. Shout out to my boy Dwear Me, you know what I'm saying? Lance <laughs> of class all day. Hey. Alright, um, let's go to Scout. Uh this is this is a position that I feel like is pretty important because I feel like with this I feel like the scout in a sense is connected to everybody. It kind of reminds me of like a midfield position in a sense because the scout is um they're they're equipped light and they're supposed to like be pretty fast and they have to go like, you know scout the area, get information, use observers, and relay the information back to the lighthouse keeper. And their job is to keep everyone informed and kind of run the show. They're supposed to be kind of the leader. So it's like in a sense they're always involved in everything. They can fight along fight alongside the um the fishermen if they're a battle type, so they can be in battle too. And uh, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. I I I, I had a lot of change of thought, but um, I just feel like this is a position in a sense that's involved involved with everyone to a certain degree. I don't think it's um represented as well as it could be so far, but I I think it's it's the one that I like the most personally. Well, they haven't. I felt like I agree with you. They haven't represented it well because one thing that interests me about the scout and the reason I say I'd be a scout because you have to have strong mental strength. You gotta, you, gotta be, you gotta be a quick thinker. Yeah. And like, I'm someone I do good or it's like, you know, I'm under pressure and I gotta just pull some bullshit out of my ass. So I feel like I'd be good as a scout and like, I don't really get too high or too low most of the time. So, uh, and like you said, yeah, we haven't seen too much. Like the best representation of what we've seen is when they were uh, doing the, the game, the, rank, the, the ranker test. I feel like Dan I, had a pretty decent I, showing. Yeah, I think that's Dan had the best true. Dan, by far, in my opinion, just because um, Kuhn's team really exemplified that Dan needed to be the one to really, like Dan, like Dan was, because he was like I feel like scouts typically aren't even anywhere close to the heavy hitters of the team. Get things done if they. Oh, I don't, I don't agree with that because Karanka's a scout, so I don't I, agree. Karaka's a, I'm pretty sure Karaka's a fisherman. He's nope, a scout. he's a scout. Um, um, mm, I know uh, my I, I know my Slayer. Yep, no no Karaka slander Bro, here. I'm on the wiki right now, Karaka's a fisherman. Damn. Nope, he's a scout. I'm on it right now oh, too. He, oh, he's, oh, I'm sorry, he's three positions at once, no wonder. Okay. I forgot, you can be most positions. All right, fair enough. But like, I, I think that like, when you're only a scout and nothing else then I feel like for the most part I feel like Hods even though he's supposed to be like this untouchable person I feel like we've heard nothing about him fighting other than how he loses fights but, but even like well, with, Hatsu, with Hatsu, he, well, Hatsu well, hasn't done really anything scout ask he's done most of the stuff he's well I guess if he's I guess if he's a battle type it doesn't matter but like I, he fights a lot yeah. more than he like I, I feel, relays like, yeah, information I feel like in that regard he isn't presented to be the, the definition of a scout that's fair I feel I feel like if like for the scout for that team it's by far like if I was gonna say who, who the ideal scout is it's Shipley Sue because he's actually the one person to actually relaying information and keeping everyone somewhat in control when shit gets out of hand. Well, that's why they do the little preference of saying it's an attack or a defense. Because, like, honestly, the biggest thing about a scout, even though, like y'all said, they are supposed to relay information, but the biggest thing, too, is is that they meet the enemy first. Yes. Regardless of all of that, you have to be able to engage in the enemy and hold your own, or it don't matter if you can relay information, because you'll be dead. It's either you need to be able to hold your own or, or run. Or yeah, hold or your run. own, not be seen, or not get caught. 
yeah. even if you've ever seen. And they got they got to do things like like read the change in Shinsu and you know scout the environment and, and, and you know using their observers and stuff. Yeah, and Hatsu's not dumb. He's an ape, but he's not dumb. <laughs> like he's proven plenty he's of times. He's, he's a well-read ape. ape. Well -read yeah, he he has plenty of times where he's shown abilities. Like he was, like I said, when he came up with that plan. To do that, they didn't follow it, but it was a good plan. And he held his own against a fucking ranker long enough to be able to do the plan. Mm -hmm. He just didn't go through with it. They betrayed him, but you know, he shows instincts and things where he could do things, scout ish things, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of contradictory for him personality wise, somewhat, because he's a swordsman, but he feels like he has to engage everybody. Yeah. See me? Again, I think that's just more so his personality treat of just being. A brash character. I mean, going back to the video game analogy, we got games like Valkyrie, um, Valkyria Chronicles, Team Fortress, so on and so forth. But one thing about Valkyria Chronicles is the scout was the most overpowered position. They can't, they move the most, they have the um, farthest sight, and um, they have the most AP, and what else? And they have the best um, class abilities too, but. The thing is about scouts. I think this is another position where Sui has not just has not shown them actually doing what they're supposed to do. Really, like the only example I can think of is during my favorite like, the workshop battle where Hatsu was undercover and whatnot in that in that black suit and um. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's the only real time I could I could well I can remember at least. If please correct me if I'm wrong where a scout was doing what a scout was supposed to be doing scouting yeah, yeah, and yeah, like finding they information so mm -hmm. the other uh, other than that they not that is a position we haven't seen them actually doing what they're supposed to be. they're supposed to be moving around the outskirts looking in, in the um underground and above to see what's going on and relaying that info instead we just you're in the dark hands. they're supposed to be in the dark too so it's kind of like okay it's another position and not only that but how many people can we list that are scouts? Yes, Croc is uh, one, but again, he doesn't. Shipley, Sue, Kuhn, Hockney, Hockney, Dan, Lamau, uh, Lamau, Kawaka. So it's like, like I said, that one rank, that one I ranker do, and Pedro, <laughs> even though he got washed. So yeah, it's kind of like, but um. Actually, Pedro didn't even get to do what he wanted. He, he didn't even get to relate it in for that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He got washed. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> we haven't seen scouts do what they're supposed to do either. So it's kind of like, um, hello, this is, this, another, this is a, another position that's getting shafted, if you ask me. Well, low-key, they show you what not to do as a scout. <laughs> <laughs> um, only thing I'll say about um Pedro is that... um when when he got killed by yuri uh i can't remember exactly what he did but i think he's i think he's, uh, it was his room or something in his memories and he did something to, to relate to karaka that he got killed by yuri that's why that's why karaka pulled up so at least with his dying breath he sent out uh, like a last bit's effort signal to karaka like um i got bodied by yuri oh well then there you go there, there's another example so but i mean still those, that's two examples out of 400 chapters Right, I thought the most interesting thing that's a power that they pull up, which I feel like, like you said, has not been used correctly, is that if you're a scout, especially if you're a ranker scout, why don't you do a fucking hologram or something? You put I, 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 I on a shadow clone jutsu. And my opinion, dope. I think the biggest problem isn't necessarily that maybe it's not that they haven't used correctly, but the scout position isn't the most overt position to be active. Like, if like, let's say we've got all like we've got five people doing what they have to do in the, as their position roles. Honestly, I feel like scouts should not be the ones that you know what they're doing at all times, which is the biggest problem. But the thing is, though, that is from the character's point of view. As a reader's point of view, we have the privilege of seeing what everybody's doing at all times. Right. Yeah. Facts. That and that and also I can't agree with you because like you have characters like Kuhn and Shipley Sue, they set up plans. It'd be very nice to have a scout to be able to run that through. I mean the guys have been helpful for that, but the guys seem to be doing the shit that the scout's supposed to do damn near. So it's like uh, and also not only that, but Croc has an ability to read minds. When are we gonna see him read a fucking mind? 
after you after you free the man them you know <laughs> <laughs> free my boy free like, my nigga he literally has and that is a class ability so that's so that's his ability by being a scout that he can read minds it's kind of like okay was y'all ever gonna let us know that on screen like is he gonna do that anytime soon like come on hmm. yeah i don't know how and not only that but do all this stuff to be honest minds um hello jedi powers and he should be freaking damn near untouchable he can read my that he can know what the fuck you're going to do in a fight way before you even do it well low key though the thing about reading minds is that i agree with you to that extent especially against lower clap but it's like you know it's kind of like the showering god thing it's like you can read it but can you react to it can you stop Hell it? yeah he can react to it look at him no i know i know him is is a bad example but i'm just saying of other people used it like him yeah and remember karaka's mask is also like an observer so like um the, the, the item so i really yeah that's what i don't I really remember i don't remember scouts though. being able to read minds in general i don't remember that i know karak no, again but I, i'll look it up and bring it up if i remember but um uh i don't know i don't know I, I i'm hoping i think part of the problem personally i would say before we move on to the next one is that because everyone could, could low-key just do anything right it just kind yeah. of muddies everything where i feel like I, maybe um siu should have focused at least with the regulars for now is let them all kind of just do their own positions for the time being and maybe as they climb they kind of you know step into other te territories because like bam's throwing hands bam's doing wave control shit that bam's doing one solo you know like bam's doing, you know what i'm saying like <laughs> right, 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 right. that's what i was saying that's why i want season three i kind of want them to go back to normalcy and climb the tower regularly this this being on the train and all this shit happened it's been badass don't get me wrong yeah but you say if i had to judge tower god on something it's, i do want to see this other shit in the work and there's so much shit on the table there's so many things out that we don't see everything that we would like to so i really hope in the next season we go back to normalcy to so so i said that in season one and again i really don't want to use the word peak because we have long gotten arcs and fights and encounters that were better than this but i think the best battle situation was the administrators test in season one all positions were there and they all had a role and they was all doing the things that they were supposed to do for the most i'll say that and and, and the test with um with quant uh quant blitz when yeah, they were exactly that, 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 was that, like, that, that one too because they were like the lighthouse it's under, and, yeah it's underrated but I, I agree with you with that i i, I kind of like with vince i'm just, like i'm hoping we get to kind of go back to the status quo at some point just kind of climb normally because like wasn't wasn't the positions like made after the great 10 families when they because usually they would fight the living like the divine sea creatures whatever it was because yeah. like, I, think, I think you said like it's not it's not useless for men versus men battles but it was designed mostly for like the um design uh, for divine uh sea creatures so i don't know I'm, I'm hoping we get to see like especially light like um with the spear bearers and the um scouts i want to see them like i want to see someone like legit like infiltrate and like you know like on some, <laughs> fast, on some fast, solid yeah, snake yeah, hide under a box <laughs> like, I, that's, i'm trying to see that like some stealth man I, it'll be dope that's kind of what i want to see but um let's move to our lighthouse keeper or light bearer which i think is extremely integral i think this might be the most important position in my opinion um you know they have their lighthouses they basically gain information in the battlefield they relay information they're kind of the commanders depend i mean you obviously you can have the support type and battle type or a hybrid type um but i think that they're extremely important because i think a light uh, the lighthouse keeper should be the person who's like the smartest or at least the most conniving hello rachel yes this is the third most hype beast position thanks to our um everyone's favorite blue-haired asshole kuna girl actress <laughs> Yeah, because of him, everybody is just freaking on the lighthouse train. And, and and it's not a bad position at all. I think it's really unique. I love the design of the lighthouse. It's just a fucking box, but it looks cool as hell. They can put shit in the box. They can be inside the box. They can give commands from the box. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and it's just, it's just a really cool thing to see. It's giving commanding and making commanding look cool. It's not just like, oh, he just standing there. He just seen this and the other. It's, it looks cool it's flashy it's just to see the mind games and shit like that the tricks and all that is absolutely amazing i think it's fantastic i i think it is an important um role in a role in general but again as i said earlier i don't think one position is greater than the other but it is 
because anybody could give commands regardless of fucking um intelligence Position. or not yeah. but yeah it is they are important enough to have somebody who's smart and have them away from the battle looking over it from bird's eye view and just giving everybody commands on and it's actually i really wish we could see that again because you know all kun is dead and all so we don't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really get to see the old lighthouse greatness in that beautiful light blue color or whatnot but yeah i think i think i it's a position i actually enjoy a lot so do i that's why i was like really happy when jirak pulled up with those lighthouses but um you guys before i go before i go in you guys chime in on your thoughts oh okay uh marcus you go first i'm gonna let you go i'm talking to you fair enough um in in my opinion like if there had to be one particular like most important position i'm going to have to say that the light bear is the most important position just because of pretty much the like the the series has portrayed the constant need for and information between every member on a team throughout an entire battle to the point that i feel like if we were to get rid of the light bear they'd be essentially screwed half the time because no one knows what anyone's doing no one knows what's happening and just the overall nature of everything just i feel like it falls apart without a position like this i feel like the light bear is the one person on the team that keeps everything together and somewhat goal oriented at all if i can kind of like use like a sports now as what we're saying like i i would say like the lighthouse keeper may not be the ace of the team but it's the captain he, yeah he's a coach he's a coach he's a point guard that's it <laughs> yeah like you know like, like like you might not be the best player you know but but you, you but you're a point guard or you're you know, the, you know the ball, or, you're the, or you're the midfielder you know you're the one that makes the plans and whatnot so or you just right. you're the one who distributes the ball to everybody in the right positions in the right places exactly. and you, you gotta know things you gotta be pretty cerebral or at the very least like i said like for me like 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 when i, when I tell people like in fighting games like i'm not particularly the smartest player but i know that i'm crafty so it's just like if you're a little conniving a little whore like rachel <laughs> you could, <laughs> it could, it could, it could work in a position like kun that dude is conniving as well, right? Yeah and, he's, yeah, and he's and he's and he's willing to kind of get his hands dirty too. So I think he kind of needs yeah. a, a light keeper like that. But I'll go ahead, on Vince. No, I would say this and guide are the best showcase positions by far. It's not even close to me. And the way that they just operate, I think it's just beautiful because it's not even like you said. Like when you originally see a light bearer, even a Rachel is semi like this. She still gets her hand dirty, but you know, they just not sitting around like, go do do my bidding, go do shit for me. And I'm gonna sit here with this shit in my hand. It's like, no, they do stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, you never expect, like they get dirty, dirty to get you. And they set up things that you can't really be prepared for. Cause if you're an eight and you just run out fighting, you start fighting a lighthouse keeper, you know, you will get fucked up. If you, if you don't have an overwhelming difference, we just been, We've been stuck in this world of gods and monsters on the fucking train for so long. We see Karanka and Yuri. And that's one thing I say too. I hope next season, I kind of hope like Karanka and Yuri go away for a while. Cause like they kind of skewer what I want to see from the regulars and the rest of the team. I just need all these high ranking people to go away for a while. I love high rankers and I would love to see more of them, but I want to see back to the fundamental basics of what Tower of God was. Mm -hmm that make me happy and see, you know, more tactical. People always use like use the word tactical. In fight. You want to see a more tactical fight? I would like to see them set up a actual game plan, actual battle plan and put it into use. Even if it don't go perfect. I, I like to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one thing we kind of forgot to mention is that um, apparently a lot of the fights in Tower God are in dark places. So it would be hard to fight without a light bear, right? So they, right. you, you need the light from their um their lighthouse to just even to just see to a certain certain extent. And I think the, the window. I, yeah, and I think that we've seen a lot of techniques with lighthouses that, that are pretty that, that have been pretty dope. Um, multiple people, you know, triple field, um, Enacor, I guess does that count? Enacor, yeah, from uh, does. you know the flow control and stuff. Like we've seen a lot. We've seen, we've seen a, pre- a, a pretty good amount of techniques from lighthouse bears too. So I think they they've been represented pretty damn well. 
we forgot about the whole darkness thing and the whole sea gimmick because the last two arcs were bright as hell. Hello, <laughs> yeah, the really last right. thing is bright as hell. It's under a clear sky, <laughs> sword arc, clear skies. It's like, huh? Um, the floor of death was kind of dark, a little bit dark. The train mm-hmm. itself is dark, but other than that, name hunt station wasn't. It was okay. Yeah, it wasn't it was really like dark. Midday at least, so it's kind of like. When are they going to be in peaking darkness? When is the well, turn down the brightness a little bit? Like, damn, well, the last station is legit on the clear ass skies. Like, I'm I'm finna see freaking Suna and Zanza's fight in the background. Like, this is ridiculous. Bro. <laughs> it's the clear, it's the clear blue, bro. The yeah. East blue shit. Um, but yeah, man, I, I like this position a lot. I don't think I'd be a good one personally. No, no, no. I'd be in terrible. Right I think I, I don't think I'd be a good like housekeeper, but um Me neither. I'm not the only one gotta... convinced that I'd be like an adequate light housekeeper. I'm so Okay, good. okay. Okay, so we're thinking about the position, right? <laughs> you have to be you have to be somebody who's willing to A, get your hands dirty, but B, basically be the smartest person on the team of all time. If you fucked up and die, game over, bro. Oh, yeah. I don't first of all, I don't want to be in that type of position. A and B, I'm somebody who likes to like, that's not the way I operate. I'm not really like, I'm like, that's why I think Scout is the best position for me. I'm not an ape completely. I can be at times, but that's not the best fit for me. I think it's just like running around being like, like I said, that second in command. Like I do a little bit of everything. And not yeah. only that, but you have to be somebody that everybody kind of respects. Cause at the end of the day, you could be a freaking light bearer all you want, but I don't have to listen to a damn thing you say. That's true. That? So you I mean, I'll happily just let my people so. know they don't want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to listen. That's well, my thing is, but the thing is, a light bearer though, that. you need you need your team just as much as they need you because I you got. What if what if what if, what if, what if you're a battle, what if you're a battlefront type and you and you raw? <laughs> Yo, like I look, I don't know if you try to like I don't know if you try to coordinate with someone and like modern warfare to an Xbox Live. But that don't work. No matter how smart you are, no matter who you are, everyone's like, "Nah, I'm run up here with the noob tubes and call it a day." That's a pretty nah, much. Nah, I want kills. I want kills. Nah, you're not gonna end the game until I get 100 kills. Nah, I want kills. That, you see exactly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. So but I'm if you look at Coon though, Coon is a straight asshole, and everybody goes, "Everybody's like, you know what though? I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna follow this nigga directly." Yes, yes, results though. It's, yeah, exactly. Would, look, if anyone ever tried to tell me, "Nah, I'm gonna get my kills," I'll be like, "I." I'm gonna get you killed. <laughs> no, bro. See, that's the guy. See, that's the guy's job, though. The guy. See, look, that's like, a be like, hey, look, I, I know everything that's going on, and at the end of the day, I don't have to help anybody. I can help my damn self. And if I don't like you, I can guide you to your death. You see, that's just the best, man. That is. Ooh, and you're not fighting let's stop, either. Let, let's stop getting fighting. off track. Let's stop getting off track. Let's okay, let's go. Okay, let's go to wave controller. We'll get the guy in a second. Let's get the controller. Let bear go. It's supposed to be the rarest position to be chosen for. Oh, uh, boy. It, doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like it. I forgot that. But um, yeah. So wave con- uh, wave controllers are could be support type or offensive type. Um, I don't. Did we have we seen a support type at all? I feel like most of them have always been. Is Laria a support type? Handsome you, handsome you, handsome you. Can, oh, oh the world right. wants yeah, my boy. Um, yeah, because. He, we saw him freaking debuff rack. That's how he's chibi form in the beginning. With. So that can consist. That could be um support, so to speak. You could argue that support. I mean, he didn't support rack, but he still can't do that. Also, but better example would be during the fucking sword art. He fucking um buffed Bam's attack. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. You got it. Um, I don't know. I forgot that. But uh, so wave controllers are can like change the entire tide of the battle by altering the flow of Shinsu. I don't think I don't know if you've seen something to that degree yet. I mean, but, bam, kinda. I mean, so, I guess with the, the um with the what the uh, in the what floor of death. Yeah, and also no no, no, no I guess we'll say the um a red Joe oh red Joe is it um hell Joe hell Joe hell Joe hell Joe, hell Joe. Hell Joe he kind of like he's like no since you for nobody <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody get no shit. But it's just like the little stuff Bam does. It's just that we haven't seen anybody do it at a at a higher rate. I, okay, that's true. Because like I always go back, I always go back to the um, to the example of Eurasia Blossom. She was like, if I speed up the Shinsu on this floor, and she killed ninety eight percent of the population. Like 
that's, that's something that a wave controller could do at their highest peak. We seen Bam do little things like that, like they said, Hua run with the eye thing, and then what he did to Yuri. But that might be more of a product of him, so I'm not completely sure if him just fell or that's something a wave controller could do. But Bam has done small things. Even Gus Stang, as a, he told he told fucking White, he was like, nah, that ain't it. Took away his took away his souls and his powers. Uh, like, he well, he, he can um he cured Rachel's disease, but ju- by just looking at her. So yeah, so yeah. they obviously can do stuff that's like way out of the means that other. Would people. you would you uh, guys say this is the most versatile position? I would say it's the most powerful position. Interesting. Well, yeah, because the most powerful combination is wave controller plus light bear. So like, it, they innately well, said. I'll say it's the most powerful position because everything is Shinsu and yep. they control yep. so they're overpowered. They they literally control the essence of the entire setting. So well, what are you gonna did do? Did we ever see what that black dude that betrayed Kuhn could do? Okay, who? The black like all the way back to like early season two, uh br- uh it was Ray it was uh, Bam had him, Kuhn Kuhn ran uh Nobik this black dude, a yellow chicken, and some. You talking about Michael? Yes, Michael. Michael. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, like, do we know, ever see this? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know who the fuck that is. Look, no, he probably was a black dude. He did some shit with Rachel, and he had an item for Casano, and he ain't done nothing basically since then. He was seen nearby um, by Emily when it was back online. That's the last time we saw him. So, he, yeah, so in other know. words, he trashed and hasn't done anything. Great. <laughs> okay, this dude. All right, you got it. Yeah. No, like, I, I feel like at this point in time, all the wave controllers that we've seen have all been offensive types, asleep, or just <laughs> out of their goddamn mind. Like, like there's really been like we haven't seen much variation in what wave controllers can do other than just ruin everyone's life. I don't think that's completely true because Laura's people can read Shinsu. So, but how does but I mean like this on like 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 if we were to use this in like is any sort of like battle like thing like like but, how like, how how can we use this like as like two? So, so but do they really? But you you I guess you want to see it in a more technical and a more yes. that, that, like. Well, other, my thing other is than just, like, they don't got to do that shit. They're raw. They just other, just no, but, that, that's their job. They can well, manipulate. Yeah. But like we haven't actually seen them other doing that other than actually being able to like stop people's movement for a short period of time. That's what I'm. That's more so what I want to see. I want to see like the more varied ways of using your wave control abilities other than Shinto explosion, moving people back, blowing them out of the freaking sky. That's a that's a lot. I mean, we just talked about Spear Bearer and how they haven't done shit. (laughs) So like I don't think you can be that complaining. They I'm done not shit. Gonna, like I don't know. I'm just, like, <laughs> if we're, like if we're gonna say that there's multiple kinds of wave controllers, then at some point I would like to see the other ways of using your wave control abilities other than the ways that we've seen Bam do and well, just, just just a fucking key bl- key wave key blast. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> this ain't no Kingdom Hearts three, bro. Um, so. In Godai's translation, um, talking about um, SLU's perspective, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know this. Um, he says here, like, okay, so battling position is similar to sports. In any case, in the tower, all the violent are close to games. Positions are like conventions of the game. Blah 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 blah. From the middle, <laughs> from the middle, lower floors, there aren't many places where tests are taken with positions. Oh. So maybe we're gonna start getting that, and we start okay. to reach some of the later floors. So maybe yeah, right look now, at him giving himself that cop out as early. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'll put in the blog post uh i'll do it later <laughs> so all right i guess i guess we'll have to see what we'll see but um i always th- thought that like the wave control is probably the most versatile position because they could do kind of do everything in a sense and shinsu is life from the tower so they kind of can change the tide of the battle um they're cool that's all i got I'm out. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's the most hype beast position thanks to our main character, Mr. 25th Bum. So, it is what it is. Everybody thinks that they could fucking control the air and shit because of him and whatnot. But I don't have a problem with the position at all. It's just since Bam is the main character, that's all we fucking see. 
and him and his fucking Kamehameha waves and all that shit, so <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> all right, go away, but it's not, at the end of the day, that's all memes or not. Seriously, I don't have a problem with it at all. I think it's cool to be able to actually control the essence of the, the setting where the story is taking place. That's like being able to control fucking oxygen. It's, it's cool as shit. It's overpowered as shit. I don't have a problem with it. It's just Bam being the main character and him being so strong. It's just like, okay, beam. Okay, another beam. Okay, now the beam is black. So it's like, okay, can we see the other positions, please? But no, nah, I don't have a problem with it at all. And it again, it is the most rare position and it is the like the special position. So I guess I could stop giving them I should give them some slack, but it is what it is. Alright, so now for the enter the uh, Red Witch Red Witch territory. Talk about Hooray! that. Hooray. Leads the way special position that like uh, like least deem. Um I'm gonna just let Sammy do this because like, this is his. This is let me just start with the quote. Well, I don't go. I don't go up. Let me start with the quote from uh, Han Sung Yu, the boy. Um, the, there are ones blessed by the Ooh. tower with the knowledge of all paths within to assist in its navigation, and at times are able to see the future and change it. We have silver dwarfs and red witches. Um, those are the two guys that we, I, I used so far. We know about. So go ahead, do what you gotta do. I can go anywhere. I'm the guide after all. My favorite quote from my wife, and it's absolutely true. This is another ridiculously overpowered position in my opinion. And in my opinion, I think it is essential or almost impossible to 100% climb the tower without a guide's help at least once. Because the tower is so unpredictable and the tower has so many X variables. It's kind of like, what the hell can you do without having someone who has foresight? It's a position where you don't even have to fucking take tests. You can freely move up and down floors as, as much as you want. A position where you can literally see the future and change it however you see fit. It's like, come the hell on. What the hell, man? I mean, Sui likes to classify them as, well, at least Red Witches anyways, as a human GPS. And I mean, that's kind of doing it a disservice because it's way more than that, but... I, it, I mean, it, at the end of the day, a GPS gets you from point A to point B, right? The guide mm -hmm. can do that, but they can do way more than that. Again, a guide, yes, guides can help people and guide them to greater heights and whatnot, but they can also have they can also do that for malicious intent. That's what I want to see. I want to see a freaking malicious as hell guide literally guiding people to their death just for the fun of it, just for sport, just for some shit like that. Cause they could a hundred percent do that. What what go what governs them that they can't or can't do that? Nothing. So it's like they're freaking ridiculous, and it's like you should really be on your toes when you when you be around them. But yes, it is indeed my favorite position. And again, it's funny coming from someone like me, who very first wife was saber. The saber class is the most powerful, the most wanted, and the most hype beast position in a holy grail war. So it's like. You would expect me to be you expect me to be for fishermen right because that's kind of the equivalent for this series nope but that's just the way it is guys are just absolutely amazing i just love them they do have the con of having um weaker physical prowess than the rest of the um classes but if yeah, you have lower battle capabilities that is nowhere near enough nerf for the thing that they are able to do i mean freaking evan got is the fucking idol merchant he got he, people are literally calling his backpack Batman's utility belt because at this point it can literally just do anything at any convenient point. Shark repellent. <laughs> and now freaking Hyun here, she can freaking ooh, she can she can literally tell you when you're gonna die, how you wanna die, what, what where you should go and what. She literally guided people through an unguidable maze just so you get to the um get to the hell train. So it's kind of like they're ridiculously overpowered, man. And I'm hap I'm sad and both happy that we don't get many of them because then it would just be way too easy. But God, I just fucking love this position. They're just absolutely so great, man. I can't get enough of them. Um, yeah, they're dope. Like in gen in general, um, each each both of both types have their own specific pilgrimage. That's which I think is cool. Um, they get their memories passed. Was it the red witches? They get their memories passed on. 
And yeah, then, it's and then the silver the silver doors they actually go to what was the floor of death something like that. I can't. Nah, they that. both they both go to the floor of death, but they just go to different places in the floor of death. And according to Evan, apparently the place where silver doors have to go for their pilgrimage is in chaos, or something like that. So maybe it's destroyed. It's like yeah. ruined. Yeah, it's like a mashup. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the whole memory thing was just about when the whole Hell Joe situation since. Guy's powers do not work at all anymore on the floor of death because the initiative is gone. After that time when freaking Hell Joe killed the Red Witch, they started passing their memories down to each other so they can be able to use their powers on that floor. But yeah, it's just ridiculously freaking awesome, man. But continue. Um actually you guys chime in. Oh, nothing to say. This is that man position. I mean, he literally covered everything that you can really say about guys. Like, um, well, like, there's, there's there's one thing I want to touch upon later, but you guys keep uh, Vince, like, what you got to say? Oh, shit. Like, you want to talk about guys? Like, Goddamn. The only thing, like, we can really add to, is, like, they show, they like, add, like, lately they've really emphasized the difference of, between how guys function, not necessarily, like, what they do, but how they do what they do. Mm hmm. Um, Zarso, you see, you just came through. Um, we we already finished the uh regular positions, so right now we're talking about uh guides, okay, in general. So, we're just on that topic right now. So, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Keep going, Marcus. No, like, that's pretty much it. Like, that's the only thing that like we really have left to add on to what he said. Really, what do we think of the difference between a red witch and a silver dwarf, right? Because Apparently, the specialty of Silver Dwarves is to be seeing the crossroads right in front of them. I, I, I need more and, of that because then, right now they're getting washed. Yeah, and then the specialty of Red is to be able to see fate, right? And I think one of the things that kind of threw me off about Evan, like not like, like I, that's my boy, I like him a lot, is the he saw Bam and wasn't just like this guy's this, he just he ain't it, and I was just like, huh, you know. Like I could understand for someone like Yuri, especially since she knew someone like a record or whatever. But I feel like Evan should have been able to um, assess that he has late, great latent potential, and he just did not see that. And even later on, when he was talking to um, Al Alumik, that was his name. Fuck, I think his name's Alumik, the the butler for um, oh for yeah, yeah, Elsta, yeah, right, whatever her name is. Um, he was still like, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I have I actually have a theory about that. So apparently according to the wiki, competent guys can tell somebody's power level just by looking at them, right? Mm -hmm. And Evan could not do that with me. <coughs> he still cannot do that, right? What I think though, and what I think about that though, I think guides cannot guide irregulars. Because they are from outside the tower. They are an X variable. They cannot see the path of somebody who's not who's not from the origin of said past to begin with. And what I what I'm using to back this up is when um Evan was talking to Harion and she's and he asked her why is he guy why is she guiding back to begin with? Um, no, she he asked her um what he asked her what um what path is he is she leading him on? And she said the path that he walks is simply the path that he walks. And I think she really can't see his fate either. She's just helping him to get to a fate that she would like, but she can't necessarily 100% see his fate like everybody else. Mm. So I think they can't guide irregulars because they are from outside the tower, because they are X variables. So that goes outside of their jurisdiction. That's interesting. I never really thought about it like that because I feel like she's been guiding them pretty well. That's all deep. That, what? That's all deep. Yeah. But, but then again, it's kind of like maybe it's not specific, specifically like guiding him, like Bam's path. It's like maybe for the betterment of the entire team or for her own personal goals, like because like, she want because she's in fog or whatnot. So I mean, it's 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 interesting to think about. I never I never thought about it like that. Because yeah, it's like because um we haven't a hundred percent got like she hasn't told Bam's future at all. Besides one thing that I might think is insight on Sui's part was after the name hunt station when Karaka pulled up on Yuri, right? And, and she said he won't die, right? Yeah, yep, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. So that that would be the one contradiction to my theory, but she hasn't done that since. Everybody else she's come in contact with, she has 100% said what their fate would be in the close by future. So it's like, and Bam being the only exception. Mm -hmm. But we again, that's just something that we'll have to more see on. 
So it's but at the end of the day, guys are just awesome, man. Evan was able to tell um how to pass Hedon's test just by looking at it and whatnot. And what I was what I was getting at earlier about that malicious intent, he didn't tell Bam the um the way to yeah. pass the test. He kept his mouth shut. Yeah. And apparently there was like how they could only guys can only guide somebody on a path that they're capable of walking. I think that's complete BS. That's up to the guy. <laughs> I think I think that's just up to the guy themselves. They can keep their mouth shut or open their mouth if they want to. So that's why I, I really want to see a malicious guy just uh, infamous one just guiding people to their death or whatnot for sport. That sounds fucking amazing, man. That should be so funny. All right. Let's do the defender. Um, our Damn, where's the last? Yeah, this boy, his boy Hendo. Um, a reposition that, that protects the light the light bearer and spirit bearer in battle. Um, Hendo Lock Blood Matter. I got him, came it came from him basically, I guess. Uh, during their pilgrimage throughout the tower back in the day, and he was he has very high Shinsu resistance and stuff like that. Um, we've seen a couple people. Uh, what's that? What's that guy's name? Aqua Williams. I think that's is that the only one we've seen. <laughs> Aqua Williams, like we've for real. For real? There's literally only two defenders. And, so, and then, no, there tanks. was, there was, there was. I have, the, I have the panel here. I don't even know this dude is, but there was the one guy who did, they, they just said that he probably is has Hendel blood in him because it's since he was this one's pretty high. But I don't know if that made him a defender or just a uh, descendant. You know? Yeah, so. I yeah, I don't know either. But literally, I'm looking at the thing. They literally named two people here. It's literally just Aka Williams and Hendo. Oh, on the on the wiki. Yeah. 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 Damn. It's just the two. Because nobody so. wants to be a defender. Their little description says defender is a rare position who aim whose aim is to protect the light bearer and spirit bearer. And we ain't doing nothing with none of those, so what's the point? <laughs> Shit. Okay, well we know that they're very important for a defense. So I, I would say in the terms of a defensive position, this is probably like um the equivalent of the fisherman, where the fisherman is almost pure offense. This is pretty mm-hmm. much pure defense. So I still think that they're extremely important and it's great if you have one. Cause uh, I don't remember when it said that um no one was able to if no one has ever found it easy to defeat the combo of Kun Adan and um blood and uh Hendo Blood Matter because they were the most powerful spear keeper and like defender duo in the tower. So okay, so if we're gonna talk about the position, I guess since there's not much information, we can kinda guess about how much they actually can do. Okay, so just from that statement right there, I'm guessing that like defenders, well, one, I, I'm ass- assuming that they're like, you know how Yuri was out there tanking when they talk about how sturdy she is. I'm assuming that a lot of their position is like that, A. And B, when they say like defensive things, I'm not thinking of just like, oh, they got a shield. I'm thinking like maybe there may be some possible like redirection ability and like, I don't know, like obviously force fields and shit like that, but I, I'm trying to think of like outside the box defensive. What do you, what do you, what, hold on, what do you think, are so, um, uh, when I hear defender and I kind of look at like, well, and then I got like the only example really is shown, I can only imagine tank, really. It's like I mean, they kind of tank, like they tank attacks and they probably have some kind of offense, but for the most part, they're there as like shields. Yeah. Um, but I, but I would also say I would also say uh, Yuri's family, the ones uh, the ones that can probably uh, the ones that can imbue themselves with uh, with Shinsu, they probably double as defender in order to like I guess enhance their bodies in order to defend themselves. If not, no, they're, they're, not, other they're not defenders though. It's only Hendo. No, no, I'm saying I'm saying that they could probably um, that, that they could probably like switch between they could switch between because. Because again, it's like uh, the defender is like a rare position itself. It's not well, something that people normally do. You don't normally well, just rankers. Rankers can pretty much do every position. So. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, what I'm I mean, saying. But, but in the day, we only know of two. So yeah, definitely rare. Like I mean, if you solely, solely, solely uh, main uh, defense and you're a defender, then then yeah, I can see it. I can see why like you're kind of like one million. Mm-hmm. That's um, basically it. What do you think, um, Marcus? I, I'm I'm at the point where I think I literally had a train of thought like five minutes ago when you first brought it up, and I completely lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could we could move on or anything because there's not much to say. Like I I'm just at the point where I think 
that there has I, I feel like there just has to be something to do with I, I think there has to be something to do with some sort of bloodline trait that runs to be a defender. And I'm not necessarily yet related to Hendo Black Matter like directly, but I feel like considering that he has to have parents or whatever, like you have to have I feel like there's something to do with that bloodline in general that that would make that would help you become a uh, a defender because like Shinsu resistance it seems to have it seems to also like flow familiar like through familial like bloodlines because we've seen most of members of the Kuhn family and not one of them are slouches by any means like they're all literally like, the most raw people on like in the entire freaking in the crew so one. i have one question though why is water jelly not a defender <laughs> good question i guess i guess intangibility doesn't qualify as dirtiness you know it's gonna go through water jelly like, but he ain't gonna stop it like right now i just want to reach through my phone and like backhand both of y'all at the same but then time. again you just have to train the train come blood and i'm saying oh, no. this adam, i'm saying this respectfully Water jelly should be the best defender. Yo, I swear to God. I swear That's to not me. All right, Vince, uh, this is your anima. That's my favorite position. And if it wasn't your position, that's the one I'd pick. But uh, so, I mean, okay. we can go into it. So let's go into it. So, special position, they subjugate, they make. Um, like the divine sea creatures into their to do their bidding um it's very rare even amongst the rankers and whatever so um i mean you can go into detail because this is one of your favorites so go off go off king all right bet well a my favorite character in the series you know my summer fish aka god aka the leader of everything snake man it, it, but, first of uh, all it's adora he's lying but continue <laughs> <laughs> anyway um my boy like I said, he elite. And, um, but I like that. It's like how they like, it's not really like something that you can learn. It's a natural talent. So that automatically makes it like way different from all the other ones. It's like, can't even learn this. You gotta be like talented. Also the most mysterious family seems to have the bloodline of this, or they seem to be way more capable of doing this. The low pull vote, low pull by whatever can't pronounce it, but they're badass. Can't wait to see them because their their leader looks like some deer looking dude in the forest when he had green hair. So that was pretty badass. Uh but their weakness is basically themselves, which is pretty fucking funny. It's like they gotta be strong enough to take care of the animal and have the bowl. They got bowls that can be compressed and stored because their animals are pretty much giant as hell. Uh but we've only seen like the metal fish in the bowl because it requires that to control them. So, and then Polak, Polak in the in the in the frog tank. That's true. We just seen Polak, but he was in a tank. He wasn't in a bowl. But okay. Same thing. Same thing. But uh, yeah, I think they're pretty badass. And like, I mean, I, I just not much more to say. That. Like, how how crazy is it that like not only can you control animals, but they've gone pretty outside the box. We've already giant eels. That's pretty cool already. How would you say our portrayal, the portrayal of us seeing animal users have been so far? We've seen Elaine, right? We've seen- They all seem um, to be badass. They all seem to like tower. Like it doesn't seem to be like what some, some, at least as far as like towers got concerned, I don't feel like we're going to see a weak animal user. Just not going to, it just, just not seem going to be happening. Cause even Kaiser, even though, you know, she was still a regular, she wasn't weak. She was like one of the strongest D rank people. So. Mm -hmm. Like they're obviously every time you see her, and, and when you saw Dorian, Dorian was the only one who didn't outright completely white. So I don't think you're ever gonna just see a weak one. I feel I I, also, I just want to see the levels of which they're willing to go because it seems like with Summer's fish, his just kind of attacked like on his own, or that's what it would seem to be. While as far as Dorian he commanded it to do certain abilities with the water. So they seem to be all have different traits they can do too. And even, um, but I, I'm still not sure of if what uh, Event can Hell did was an animal or was it just a technique with the giant elephant, ancient beast thing. But I would like to see more of that. And I would like to see if Rack has something, some connection to that. Anyone else want to chime in? 
Uh, I didn't know Angel was a anima. I just found that out. Who? Uh, Angel? Angel? Yeah, Angel. Uh, she was on. She was on the train for a little bit, I think, or or at least they were getting up. To oh, the she train. had those those little metal mm-hmm. eating ball things, whatever that she used against Haru when they were going up the stairs. So like, yeah. I guess that kind of qualifies. So I, I mean, guess, I guess it makes sense. And it also it also adds to the fact that you really won't find a weak anima user because she because when she came through she was uh, she was she wasn't anything to sneeze at you know what i'm saying like she like like she was out here kind of like you know flying with a little uh, little weapon and everything like she wasn't like all too powerful but she wasn't anything like she wasn't yeah like, they like, can't like, they can't be they on. can't be trash they can't just get washed it doesn't yeah. feel like she wasn't wagnon <laughs> like wagnon first drop because like wagnon could like barely do shit in the first place you still can't do shit but all right Nope. <laughs> Watch out for the master balls, bro. Watch for the master Man, balls. Last, bro, last, I swear to God. Last night if he actually gets a master ball, I'm literally throwing my phone across the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. If I see him hold a master ball, my phone's getting thrown across the room. No regrets. The 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 anima techniques or whatever technique is strong within the Lobo Bia family. What, what, what do you think is the best, like, animal whatever we've seen so far i would say it's um frenier whatever the fuck um a lane zone her being able to switch spots with it and when it bites you the wounds it just doesn't close just you just bleed out um yeah that's probably the best display of power you're right you're right that's- I, I, i'll find shadow fox they, they they figured it out quickly so honestly <laughs> honestly I, honestly i would say uh i would say kaiser's uh kaiser's uh yeah. anima that was just like the the greatest example of fuckery the greatest example of fuckery that wasn't even like a good power that's just complete like are, like, are you serious one bite and like one bite and i'm bleeding out for like the rest of the match yeah. i'm right because i told you yeah, but, hon- out here. but honestly dorian frogs dorian's frog is uh that that's probably like the coolest thing i've seen because nah, like my girl verdi with her giant octopus Get out of here! What is what is this, hentai? Get out of here! Yeah, I'm that shit in my life. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, shit. Kind of... Even the stingray did shit. Stingray out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, aquatic animals are real, bro. All right, um, Simi, you got anything to chime in, or are you good? Um, I used to play a French MMORPG called Dofus, and in that game, there was a class called Summoner, which were exactly animals they would summon. The monsters that you can fight in the game to fight for them and whatnot, and they was, ooh, they are very obnoxious to play fight against in PvP. But um, yeah, that's basically my opinion on animals. They just fucking this this man was version of um summoners and whatnot. It's a cool position. I would like to see more of them. I mean, we only got to see um Kaiser fight. I mean, we saw freaking handsome. You pull out his giant ass fucking fish thingy, but we didn't even get to see yeah, it. Yeah, but dude, dude didn't want no smoke with that. So. Yeah, he just pulled it out, and then that was it. <laughs> so yeah, that's just that told you right there. He didn't want no, he didn't want no smoke with he that. Want absolutely no smoke whatsoever. But um, yeah, it's just it's a position I want to see more of. I don't really have an opinion of it. I don't got no issue against animals or whatnot, Peter gimmick, but. <laughs> All um, right. I would want to. No, no, go ahead, go It's something that needs to be seen. I want to see Kaiser come back finally. Because it's like, okay, yeah. we, let's, see, let's see the special position. Because I'm tired of fucking Bam doing this coming in mirror waves. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I would want to say that it seems as though Anima don't normally do anything else. Well, say for like a couple, like it doesn't seem like that many Anima, uh, anima actually like do anything besides summon their creature. Because I'd like to see like a wave controller. With uh, with an anima or a light bear with uh who's also anima because that'd be pretty cool. Just kind of like toss around like the different combinations between. And they know that they know that be too od though. See you got exactly that's the reason why you don't see. It. And the eel come up behind you and eat you. We'll, yeah, probably, you that, bro. we'll probably see it later, but probably you gotta you gotta you gotta stop me from talking about Mew Love. So shut the fuck up, Wansula. Stop. Let's go. Circle technique user. Only two people, your boy mm. Submerge Fish and the Goat Mule Love. Um, oh, no. No because, character. because you, they're certified, you have to take a test at um Gustang's Research Association to be able to do this. Um, basically, because because I, I know some people are asking me before, like, what the fuck does it, what the fuck does it do? Um, from my understanding, with with a perfect control of um um what's it, Mune and Sue, 
basically you maximize the efficiency of your shinsu by creating a perfect circle you can use it for traps you can ride on it you know saying blue or out you love go like oh my goodness this shit raw um yeah 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 let me see. yo it's my, it's my turn okay um yeah uh we've seen we've seen a lot of uh cool techniques from my boy got the pitch up change you know what i'm talking about got the beam cannon you know what i'm saying got the cut pass boy yeah, let's go. Uh, i don't i don't i've never that. seen height like this for a day <laughs> oh, for like three um, seconds bam, bam, he's has a spear bearer too. bam has been able to um to do it he, he, he's used it but he ain't certified you can take that test you know what i'm saying so we're not gonna we're not gonna count this so it's a trash team. ability but uh well bam can copy anything so that's really yeah that's, that's bam, not saying much but, and, and, but, and when he's doing it, lightning spears. but when he's doing it he's not doing it to such a like high efficiency like like like, like, they, like they're doing it so we're not gonna do that so, so shut your ass up with verdi over there little nigga here we go <laughs> uh anyone want to chime in though uh i'm done standing <laughs> no Oh wait, what? Um, I said they didn't want to chime in. Oh yeah, um, yeah, you know, like your boy Naruto, your boy Jirai, the Rasengan. Oh my! <laughs> oh, the disrespect! The disrespect! Thank you guys for coming. But um, that man, that man me would love to use bubbles as an attack. I just want y'all to know that. Oh yeah. your boy, um, Shamon, Shamon Kata, fucking um, Caesar gimmick. Yeah, mm. see, look, see, we on the same way, but see, so Zeppelin, you know what I'm saying? But um, I actually just want to see the research um association because mm -hmm. yeah, that's the like only way. If that is the only way for you to become this position, then WTF going on in that fucking facility? You, you been knew that? Look who running it! Like, come on now, you know, they, no dudes don't care about nothing. Yo, Gustin will literally sell his firstborn child to promote that fucking research. His firstborn, he will Crazy. sell half his family for anything. Crazy. Yeah. Kind of an asshole. Um, I would say that's definitely a, like a strange, unique uh, position. I mean, you, I mean, you'd figure, okay, you're gonna learn Shinsu. You'll learn like you know the ways Shinsu, like the best ways uh, to like you know uh, manipulate Shinsu. And it's like, hey, this specific position where you focus on making it round and circular this is like the most like complex thing and it needs its own uh its own classification as I, I find a little weird but i mean you know it's it's uh is what it is i find it very partic shout uh, particular shout out to spirit bomb shout out to uh, uh shout out to uh destructo disc um, oh yeah, that's a good one. The Shoto this one of the most freaking powerful b moves in, in dragon ball to begin with oh um, yep. big facts yep what about my what about Masenko, bro? Um, no, nah, we don't care about that. Just put this out. Just put this out, brother. Just a beat with your hand on your forehead. <laughs> shout out, shout out to uh, Spirit Ball, Yamcha's little Spirit Ball, that little shit that that can fucking fly around and beat the shit out of you. Oh shit! Forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the blue ore is is a dope technique because Bam uses it a lot. I mean, I don't think he needs it anymore with the butterfly wings, but. You used to use it to fly around before you got those wings so yeah well, this is pretty badass yeah i know because you love didn't his... he wait, wait, hold on. i always figured that he kind of like evolved the use of uh of the board into his wing that's 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 the way i saw it at least i mean Think I of what? no it's when he it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's when he activated the thorn and stuff like or oh, like okay. he accepted himself and he got through his little character growth you wild you be wild then with those connections in the, in the data yeah, in the say. data floor that's when um that happened and now you can just use it whenever he wants which is pretty dope um I, I... but yeah Great I see, um i just want to see one of them do a fucking spirit bomb like move That'll be pretty cool. I really thought it was coming. Uh, low key, when he's fighting Dad of Jaha, I, I really mm -hmm. want to do that shit. And Jaha was just going to go, damn, gimmick out. Mm. All right, let's move on to um, Dan Sula. Um, this one I think is really cool. We only, I think I, we've only seen that one dude from, um, was it Wall Hike Sung? Kurudan? What 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 what's what is what's his affiliation again? I can't remember his affiliation. I'm pretty sure he's with Wolf's Wolf Hong. Yeah, Don. Um, yeah, he's from Wolf Um So this this Dan Sula um is a special position that basically lets you it's a very powerful wave controller technique where you can apply like great shinsu pressure on your target so they can't move. 
with a weapon or something um he used yeah. this but he like swung his hammer down i believe on a lighthouse and it like brought down like this like like uh the sinshu forest and somebody like pretty like pretty far away so you could use it at a distance too we know um submerged fist and song you think is like swear to every fucking position he can use it too <laughs> he can use it too so he's powerful um i think this is, i think that was the only instance where we've seen it being been used so we can't really go in depth about it but i mean it sounds dope it reminds me of like bleach spiritual pressure you know when you just kind of just subdue your opponent with just an overwhelming force of like your yatsu or whatever the fuck. yeah yep. also, <laughs> say it's like um you could kind of say it's like uh conqueror's hockey too a little bit but it's like it's basically like any sort of um gravity technique that's just so dense so powerful that it just um restricts your movement and quite frankly it's just another one of those positions where we need to see more of period because this is getting fucking ridiculous now we getting we're running out of shit to talk about mm-hmm. okay um i have godai's translation here so let me just go into what he said about um the position because this this is hit this, this is his personal analysis of the situation and ability so don't like take it as gospel but um he said uh with evan's position Curtin leaves the room um where evan is sitting in in order to take out um land an assassination of the jihad family he requests support from hatchling who has control of Quinn's lighthouse so far away in the dark cave we reach okay blah 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 blah. all right so let me go through like the the order so hatchling programs to coordinates and then basically kurodan he sw- he gets the t- goes to the lighthouse and he swings his hammer down right so it transfers the impact of the hammer onto the disc of shinsu and then basically it was transferred all the way to wherever the dude was and i killed him i guess that's how we that's how he saw it i have to go back and read that part just to see what it is but that's literally like the one time we've really seen the news. that's crazy but it seems fucking dope i think we just need more exposition on a lot of these special abilities because so let's see it <laughs> damn semi semi gimmick out Damn, so when he yeah. finish a damn sentence, he's not about this. Mm-mm. No, we, we need we need that written somewhere in Tower God. Let's see it. That needs to be the thing for the next season. Let's okay. see it. All right, let's move on to um Huayomsa, flame user, um blaze user, whatever. Um, be able to convert your Shinsu into fire. Use fire, fire. It's fire. Yo, Quattro <laughs> Blitz. It's fire. Quattro Blitz. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm surprised that they even have positions for these because I just felt like, you know, when the tower, they're like, you can do anything. I just felt like that was just something that we were going to see regardless. Uh, mm. I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that. I feel strange. like it's not necessarily like a position, but it's more more or less just like a, a way to characterize your ability. Like a special position. <laughs> I, I <laughs> like that's special. No, I'm just saying. I just said that because, like, you know, obviously they had a whole family devoted to it, to that one particular ability. The Yan family, and then, and then um, the Blitz family is like a branch, right? Of their family, something like that, or something. Like, yeah, so. I think ready to use it, but um, they're like it's pretty. I would say it's pretty powerful from what, even what we've seen because when Yo was fighting Ragwell or Angel, what, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lazos has Ragwell, but a- Angel, um, her fire acted as as a shield, as a barrier as well. So like no attacks were hitting her, and she was literally burning everything around her. So it had like air effect, heating up everything around her. So like, to s- and we know that it's not even like at its best. It's not, so it's pretty. It'll be pretty interesting to see how the energy do it can get because we already know that um, SIU said that uh, should she be able to control it, she can put Ran to shame, right? <laughs> so. Fire oh. out, ace gimmick out. So you know, ace shout out to Sasuke, Katon, Go Kaku no Jutsu. You know, <laughs> if you don't get that uh, edgy boy out of here, first, first get that of first, first of boy out of here. But um, now nah, I think it, you know. The funny thing is, I think it's kind of redundant. If um, if Shinsu has um a different quantities, properties, abilities, whatever you want to call it, that we're gonna move slowly, start moving into people controlling elements and shit like that i think it's kind of redundant to make each element have its own special position that's, that's what i was saying see now you now you thinking like me i'm just like well, what's the point of that yeah, uh, yeah exactly it's kind of it's kind of redundant to me so it's like okay so if um 
Kun can control fucking what was it? Ice uh, and then his father yeah. can control electricity, Rock can control rocks. So it's kinda like, okay, if Shinsu naturally has these hidden properties, what's the fucking point? It's kinda redundant, but yep. that's just my opinion. Regardless, fire is fire, it's lit. I don't dislike it at all. You know, freaking Ella out, so yeah, see, I'm, I'm with you because I'm just like, what, what, what was the big point of that? Like, I mean, obviously their family has to stand out in some capacity because they were the only one who got a whole family devoted to their firepower. So there's got to be something more to it. But it's just like, yeah, why is it a position? I, I don't get it. That's just as we've seen up to this point have all been like a familial trait or so it's, it's something that's i think is hard to really quantify at this point did you guys know that their physical stats apparently increase when they use their power yep. oh see well there you go that's they spent <laughs> we kind of damn we low energy come on let's get the morale up like damn <laughs> oh shit <laughs> Like Leo, like look at Yeon on the Hell Train. Like she literally was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna burn everybody," and I was really hyped for that. Mm -hmm. Which on that going? black clover? Is she on that black clover? Did it? Do you think that converting no. your Shinsu into fire is 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 um specific only to the Yeon family and their branches, or do you think like if you were mm. talented enough to figure it out, you'd be able to do it? You think it's a, a bloodline thing? I no, mean, it's, it's either a bloodline oh, thing or a contract thing. I wouldn't even say it's a bloodline thing, only because uh, Lero can use uh, his lightning. I know, I know, like that's gonna be like the next one, but it's like uh, Quanto Blitz and and his family, like they're a special family that can use that specializes uh, in uh, in flame control. So I can only imagine. Like well, it, I don't. Th the thing. Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, no, you're good. But you're the good. thing about the lightning is that there's a specific test that you can take in order to get that ability. So but lightning, why? Again, that has to do with the contracts, which is why I say it's either family or contract. Because it could be that the family has a contract they get that has their uh, their descendants maintain that ability, be lost. Yeah, all these contracts for all these small little things kind of stupid. This some lawyer ex shit. Like I don't need a contract to use the fucking fire. Like you need a contract. Mm -hmm. to use <laughs> floors, bro. Hey, they gonna no, they gonna be like before you burn the tower up. We need you to sign an extra contract. I'd be like, what the fuck, bro? Like, can you relax? Wait, can I burn shit? Yeah, just sign three of these hoes already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's, let's since we kind of already talked about, let's get the uh, Gian Sula, which is a lightning user. Again, redundant. Redundant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then they already passed Avatar. They can already use blue lightning. So what's the point? They already should be go. Should be stronger. Damn. All right. Uh, crickets. <laughs> <laughs> See, they use crickets. Ain't nothing to say. Oh uh, man, they're gonna tear us up. Yeah. Wait, actually, uh, real quick though, real quick though, I really do find it interesting. How come uh, for uh, for Jay and Sula, you have to take a test if you're not a part of a family, but for the flame control users, they don't have to. At least because only families have used it. Families that have the skill have used it. So does that um, mean you have, so, so does that mean you have to take a test or no? I couldn't tell you because I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Um, that, I what know. I think. It, well, I think <laughs> the lightning test is administered by Kun and Duan himself. Which is, is it? why it's, I believe so. Yo, Sui, where you at? We need answers. You, you retire, bro. Chill out. Nah, you nope. got any answers, uh, bro. You uh, I mean, I'm on the wiki right now. It does say that you can take a special test to be able to wield. Um, so I guess you're right. So I know, I didn't remember I that. I think, yeah, I think it's a test that Kuna Duan gives himself, gives in order to actually become a GM. So I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that anymore. Uh, but yeah, I think Kuhn gives a t I think that's what it is. I know that there are certain special families that do have abilities that do that are, I believe, genetic that will go down to the descendants. But I believe the test is how it's to do with them actually maintaining maintaining those contracts. Okay, what is okay, so hold on. So the two mole like drawings under uh Laroro's eyes, these symbolize that he has passed a special test. What kind of test is unknown, although it was most likely to become a Gionsula? Wow. And and the reason why I do with like Kun and Duan is because when 
Kun Ran eats the pill, he gets the same dots on his face. Ah, I didn't, I didn't. Oh shit. Yeah. Look, uh, we finally well, got something to talk about. <laughs> that, I mean, I mean, but I mean, why does Kun Edouan have the stupidest so so crit whatever the stupidest nickname? So Briquet. Uh, yeah, he didn't want to be called he, the Electric Eel, so he called himself Blue Thunderclap. That's a fucking retard. That's not wait, that, wait, wait. What's the problem? He's like, he's like, nah, that's, that, that's he's like, I don't like that. That's not Rob. Yeah, yeah. Blue he Thunder was like Clap. anybody. He's like, whoever calls me an eel, I will kill you. I was like, what? <laughs> Nigga, that's wrong. What's wrong? I will send. A, I will send a lightning spear through your whole chest. Better not call me that. <laughs> Like personally, I think it has to. I I fully believe that like maybe they just called him an eel all the time while climbing the tower to the <laughs> point that he just hated being called an eel. Oh, she and got real was, tight. That well, nigga, well, that nigga has one insecurity. He get all the bitches. And this is the thing he gonna complain about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That really, that really. <laughs> well, we can talk about the technique because there's a lot of techniques here. I'm seeing. Um, your favorite red, uh, red on pill popping. Molly's mm -hmm. facts, um, mm -hmm. which, which I feel like, um, I feel like someone like Machani wouldn't need to use that anymore. Cause I remember how, no, she, how, yeah, how, how I was talking about being able to, um, just do that within your own body without having to take a pill. Yeah. Right. So you I feel like she could probably that. do that to that extent, but this is like the beginner version of it. So, um, it, it was called, didn't you teach that to, uh, to run or did Ron just figure that out on his own? No, no, no. He, he taught her, I mean, she taught him, um, uh, he does the Machani style lightning spear technique. But okay. also, yeah, the pill is a thing for their family. I think. Yeah, the kids can use this, can do that to like, in, in, like enhance their own body and everything. Because um, Dada Machina uses in the data floor, but I feel like um, it's like it's, it's, it's an archaic use, uh, archaic way to amplify your strength because it's dangerous. When you have better sense, you control within your own body and whatnot. I don't. I feel like you can do that without um, having the effects being that deadly, based on what Jod was saying when he flexed on Bam the first time in the data floor. <laughs> oh. So since we talked since, since we're gotten into this this kind of it's a connection here see this makes it interesting with the other position too because oh, like since there's family techniques and family bloodlines imagine being like you can be a defensive scout and still have attack capabilities if you're a coon mm -hmm. if you're a coon and you have the lightning techniques what's the what's the problem with you like still having offensive capability even though you're a defensive scout i think like that adds more to your versatility it can make you way stronger than you normally would be now i guess that's some of like the luck of the tower it's like you're a defensive scout and you're from a special family but i'm just saying like that adds to it i'm pretty sure someone said earlier that because like that like that's a that's real complicated and that's that's way too hack that's way too hack i mean at the end of the day i mean i feel like if there's one person we've seen who just like ticking all these boxes, it's, it's kind of some you. You just out here, like oh, yeah, he really he's just out here. Uh, uh, I'm uh, out here stealing abilities from everybody. He just well, I, I, I told you he's the guy. Anima. Oh, I can do that too. Oh, this I can do that too. I'm like nigga, I told you he's the guy. He don't <laughs> care. He don't care, dude. Um, um, we got the lightning spear techniques. I mean, they look really cool. Like those panels are always very pretty. Um. I love, I love the one with Machete. That was my that's my favorite one. I mean, the one with Kun and Dana Dana floor. That shit was long as hell. It's not even like <laughs> this is him as a regular. Like good god down. All right. Uh, crickets. I guess we just crickets. Want, I guess we went to the last one, which is basically uh, I don't I don't think uh, spell users. Um, we don't know anything. Your Levi, we know nothing. Your, your Levi. Uh, we know that they're cool. That's all we need. Three, to know. three people in the tower have it, and we know nothing. Sachi, Arlene, and uh, the new guy Levy. They all use spells, and we don't know nothing. And then the Riddler, yeah, I bet. They're all completely different. All right. <laughs> I guess we can't really go with that. We don't know too much. Well, um, I guess we can kind of just open up the floor for like a free form discussion on anything you want to chime chime in on any positions and whatnot. Um. <clears throat> Ran has the most wins next to Bam, one on one. So, uh, that all, all right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yo, um, cast a cast a class out. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my girl Medi Media. Shout out to my boy. Um, what's his name? I can't pronounce his name. I forgot his fucking name. But um, uh, rule breaker out. You know what I'm saying? You know we killing children and whatnot. And yeah. 
Oh, yeah, you're talking about like, I, I, don't, I don't remember his name either from Fate, but uh, I can't remember. Oh. But, um, oh, um, Zarsa, what position do you think you would be in? Who would be your tower guy? Um, or and or de dead ass, probably a scout, and then for a special position, Lightninger, uh, Joe Sula, only because one nigga, like, I like, 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 I like, I, I'd go find shit, like. Find niggas. I don't like to actually fight, but I know that I'm probably gonna have to, so I'm just gonna shock the shot you, niggas. You could be a battle, a battle focused scout though. That's Damn, we got too many scouts now though, so I guess I gotta be a because spear scouts bear are now. raw. Because scouts are raw. Scouts are raw. I gotta be a spear bear. I'm gonna keep everything together. It's I'm gonna be a spear bear now because we already got two scouts now, so I'm gonna be a spear bear now. I'm gonna just throw. You got no aim. You gonna miss everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, li hey, listen, bro. I'm trying to help the team. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. uh... <laughs> What do you think? What 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 position, the special position? Do you think we have? We got the best displays of. In general, animal. Special really? positions, really? Anima. Yeah. I, 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 me I, personally, I, yes. I I believe anima only because it, there's so much there's so much variation with what you can do with these animals after what we've seen from anyone who's ever used an animal in battle. Like, don't get me wrong. Like wave controllers. Yeah, they're cool. You can like, you know, make circles with energy, but it's like, dude, like that's just energy. There's not like there's nothing there's nothing more that you can really do. Like if you had an element you add into it, okay, cool, but like yo. Like, don't tell your racial don't tell your racial blossom that. Yeah. Right. She gon she gonna kill your whole family and the whole floor. She gonna accelerate you too and kill all the whole floor. Um Ooh, I, I mean shit. I'd say from the special position standpoint, I'd probably say um Gian Sula because We've seen a bunch of kuns just fucking throwing lightning, eat lightning, <laughs> lightning spear, <laughs> just lightning thunder, kill, thunder, lightning thunder cloud, like <laughs> just oh. stopping the hell train with thunder. Like we've seen a lot of like techniques and lot. Maybe so I guess that too. Like even and you just you just you just like electricity is around him all the time. <laughs> right. Shout out um, to my boy Raiden. You know Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Right. Well, how come one of them's not wearing the hat? That'd have been too bad. Yeah, we got those, uh, the little midget niggas with the with the with the beard, though. Okay, so they got to throw. They got to throw. Um, what do you what do you think for a regular position? I think we said what lighthouse keeper. We think yeah, lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, and probably fishermen because a lot of fishermen. Yeah, because that's all they do is fishermen just out. <laughs> and then underrepresented, I guess, would be defender. And spear bear. Yeah. Defender. They literally do the least amount of things. Yeah, but we haven't even seen one. Oh, we've seen one, but he ain't did nothing. Cause Aka Williams submitted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, we need. I just I hope I do hope. So like so now that we know that at least um in the lower floats apparently the positions don't matter as much. Hopefully as they start to climb, we start to see more as people take their roles seriously, even dual roles, whatever it may be. Um. Any, you guys have any final thoughts? You can wrap it up now because we're kind of done. Um, well, last thing I want to say is uh, for scouts, since like that's my favorite position, oh. I would like to, I would like to see more uh, ancient observers, like that one, uh, like the uh, the original uh, co conductor of the Hell Train, because he had one when he was fighting Yuri, but that shit just got bodied, I believe. Oh, the Purple Dementor, yeah, yeah, That'll yeah, nice. yeah. Um, I just like to see more of those. I want to see if there's any uh, heck. I want to see if the workshop can uh, can pull off something, make make like a new one, or, like a, a more modern version of a of an uh, well off the old schematic, I guess. Okay, I'll ask you guys this real quick then before we wrap it up. Um, I I, I assume you guys assume that you can use more than just fire and electricity in terms of elements, earth slash rock, maybe I don't know, metal, I don't know, whatever the fuck other elements, wind, I don't know. Do you guys yeah. assume that you can do that with Shinsu? Yeah. yeah, but I guess there wouldn't really be a point though with win because you can already do shit as a wave controller. So I'm exactly. Win raw. I mean, okay. Well, everybody. He was like win raw. He like win raw. No disrespect. Like, 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 what if I just take the air out your body? Like, like Zaheer. Like, come on. I don't know, but I feel like that's, <laughs> I don't feel like because there is no wind. It's Shinsu, so it just do whatever Shinsu people can do. I mean, uh, but I mean, I mean, with most of the, with with like the fire though, it's, it can also amplify your um, like your your physical traits and stuff. So I mean, it, I mean, I got you, but I'm just saying, we, but you we do agree that there'll be more, not yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, sure. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked if I saw a win. I mean, I would be a little shocked, but I'd be cool with it. Do you think that like with the Yeon family, they can they can take it up on the up a notch, go from like fire to like magma or something? 
Oh, that's what like I want to see. Well, what's so special about them? I need to see. I need to see their high rankers. I need to see the regular rankers. I need to see what the capabilities of this position is. I oh. can you out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can see uh maybe when Wooney on fucking D Defrost, the dead man. <laughs> Kun, where? Oh uh, Lord. Well um, I'll see, but um wait, uh just real quick, I want to add one more thing in. Uh because so because Shinsu is I guess translated as uh divine water and everything. I would like for the team to uh, go to different areas and kind of like watch it and I guess like experience environments that are like uh, they're like uh, that exist within like highly dense areas of Shinsu. I want it's like uh, more animals. Floor of death. Though. Floor of death is it's just a hell. Well, the, the higher they go, the denser it'll get. But I got I got what you're saying. Um, yeah, nah, I'm messing with you. Yeah. Fair. Um, I guess water would be. I like to see some water users. That'd be dope. I, That'd know, be funny. water, water, water tribe all day for me. You know, I'm kind of blood better shit. So I'll be no real talk. talk. Get out of here, hack ass. That would be cool. So, so I, so I got a question though. Okay, so because yeah, I forgot y'all brought this up. So Kuhn is in a family of users that uses ice. So is that gonna be a thing? It's gonna be like from a family of fire users, and she's like, oh, by the way, I can use water too. Maybe. I mean, why not? I don't know. Shinsu, Shinsu, Shinsu is like quite literally yeah, yeah, limitless, <laughs> and Ryu can create life apparently. So I mean, this there's a lot of there's a lot there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. I mean, we're gonna have that we're gonna, we're gonna have that convo eventually. We talk about Shinsu. But, so Orochimaru uh, whole gimmick. <laughs> yeah, essentially. But um, all right, guys. Thanks, guys, for coming. Um, shout out to everybody. I'm, I'm fucking hungry. Um, same. I haven't eaten anything the entire day. I got food on the way, bro. We you're.